Hello and welcome to Hibstock. I'm your host as always, Gavin, and of course we're joined by Dave and Stephen today, but we're also joined by Scottish Cup winning legend Liam Fontaine. We went through the Ross County game on Sunday with him, and then we talked about his time at Hibs, joining Hibs, the, of course, in depth about the Scottish Cup win and the aftermath of the Scottish Cup win, differences between Stubbs and Lennon, and then his decision to leave Hibs to go into Ross County. We also chat to him about his new project Fontaine Meets which he's doing with Tom Zanelli of course who, used to, who he linked up with for Fontaine of Knowledge with Marathon Bet but quickly before we get into the interview with Liam we have got some exciting news we have teamed up with the 2.1 what is the 2.1? The 2.1 is an independent Scottish football website run off the back of the support and generosity of its subscribers. They don't have ads or agendas, just a group of passionate sports journalists that covered the Scottish Premiership and a bit more. With modern data analytics, long-term features and many documentaries covering the culture of Scottish football. And as I said, we're teaming up with them and if you sign up and subscribe using the discount code HIBSTALK where you get 10% off your first order, Hibs Talk will then receive a portion of that and that will help us improve the podcast, get new features and do things like this, like interviews with ex-players on a more regular basis. So head over to the2.1.com forward slash subscribe and remember to use the promo code HIBSTALK for 10% off your first order. So we're joined now by a player who spent three and a half years at the club, according to soccerbase.com anyway, 98 appearances and four goals. One Scottish Championship Winners Medal and one Scottish Cup Winners Medal, of course, Liam Fontaine. How you doing, Liam? I'm good. Thank you very much for having me on the on the show. Great to have you on. Before we get into start your your time with Hibs, uh, obviously it was a good opportunity to you know you, you're at Ross County just now. We were playing Ross County on Sunday. Um, I know you were at the game. You were catching up with likes so, uh, of seeing the photo of you with Big Marv and Dan McGregor and stuff. How did you? What did you think of the game? Yeah, I thought it was a, I thought it was a good game to be honest. Um, definitely entertaining. I was I've got it to be out. Obviously, not out on the pitch. It would have been nice to obviously come back to Easter Road and play and stuff. But um, you know, it's like I said, it's good to to be there, uh, be around the place, and, and catch up with some old faces. And and yeah, we uh, sat up and watched the game, and I thought it was quite an entertaining game. And obviously, as always, there's always excitement to the very end. All right, Liam. It's uh, Dave. So, what do you, what do you think that Ross County can take for that game? Because obviously, the, it was a good performance uh, for for your boys. Yeah, um, I think they can take obviously loads loads from the game. Um, obviously, coming up such a a strong opposition like Hibs, and obviously sort of playing the way we did against them, I thought we were, I thought we were definitely um, sort of involved very much in the game. Obviously, we played well. We kept the ball. I thought it was a Sort of, our, you could see the sort of style of play that we're sort of going for this year, and you know, like I said, to play against such a strong side and 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 run a, a sort of current sort of top four Premier League team that close is is something that we can definitely take and and use going forward with our obviously campaign to try and get to get back up to the Premier League. I think I've seen a lot of Hibs fans after that game comment on how well you guys played and the, how well you tried to get the ball down and actually play some decent football. And uh, I think a lot of Hibs fans, obviously with yourself there and because of the football you were playing, um, really tipping you for hopefully um, winning, either winning the the, the championship or uh, coming up mm-hmm. to the playoffs. So hopefully a good season ahead. Um, when, when are you hoping to get back yourself? Um, I'm hoping to be back involved in sort of the next sort of um, either the next coming sort of weekend or the weekend after that. Obviously, with it was unfortunate, obviously with me breaking my arm sort of just over four weeks ago. So, um, you know, obviously, if anyone knows about bone injuries, bone injuries obviously usually there's like a sort of ballpark figure to let a bone heal. But you know, I'm ahead of schedule of where I'm supposed to be. Um, and like I said, it was just unfortunate and a little bit too early for me to. So obviously miss the game at Easter Road, but it wouldn't have been right if I had sort of tried to rush back just for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hi hey, Liam, it's Stephen now. Um, I was just wanting to get your thoughts on the current Hibs squad um, and what what you think, uh, how you think our season's got to go uh, based on the performance from Sunday. Yeah, well, um, of course, obviously, um, ever since I had to obviously leave Hibs, of massive part of my my sort of um, career and. Like I said, I watch as a fan now from afar, and you know I think obviously with I think just going with um, 
the the strength that you had in in Europe this year goes to show that the current squad is more than capable of sort of progressing and and um, and going put maybe even better than they did last year. I think obviously losing a couple of players that they lost with McGinn going, McGeoch and having to sort of rebuild. But I think that the club has shown that they're they're back in they're back in the the manager to to try and replace them players and. Obviously, we've had a couple of boys start really well with uh, Stevie Mallon, who I always thought was a great player whenever he used to play against him anyway. So it's just a case of, um, you know, just they've replaced the, the the ones they lost with a few good players. And it's just has, has, that, has that group will gel now. And obviously, it would be nice to see him do well again this season. Yeah, so you just said there, Liam, that you, you're obviously a fan now. But mm-hmm. it is quite safe to say you're kind of just one of the players that just kind of got it. Like got the club, it's like yeah. you and like Big Marvin. That is like it is quite a rare thing. Like, so what what made you just click? Well, what made it click for you? Um, I mean, for me, like whenever anyone sort of asks me about that, that sort of question, is is I think the time that I arrived at Hibs was um, was big because at that time I think the, the club was going through like its its sort of revamp and transition period, and I thought that. Obviously, being part of like the the original sort of group that was to sort of like come up again where we started, obviously having to rebuild and with Alan Stubbs sort of having to rebuild the squad from scratch and just being part of that sort of cycle where every season we we played we um we had we had things to play for. I mean, obviously Alan Stubbs is sort of what he wanted was to integrate a lot more with the fans and get the fans more involved with the players, which I think is. I think obviously by evidence is 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 it's evident to see that that worked and I think a lot of lads the ones that he was signing he wanted them to have that sort of vision and hunger for it as well and I think that's that was key um was that was key in the sort of um rebuild of 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 Hibs and I think that obviously just being involved in the success that we had in those three three and a half years four years that was just obviously it was just it's obviously going to stay with me for the rest of my career and like I said, it's one of the things where you just get, and every time you stepped up on that pitch, you wanted to do well for, for the for the Hibernian jersey. So um, yeah, I think it's just the fact that, like I said, the the timing of my move there, and obviously what we were able to achieve, and sort of rebuild that that bond and that special sort of feeling that um, Easter Road and Hibs as a club has still and now got back around it. So at that point in your career, why, why um, did you feel that Hibs was the right move for you? Um, I know you've been up in Scotland very briefly with Come On It before, but what was it that kind of made you go right? Hibs is the, the club for me at this time, at this point in my career. Well, uh, at the time, obviously, I came. I was I was just coming off a long. Um, I'd had a long sort of long stay at uh, Bristol City, and um, obviously, the they like like in football, things change. The managers come in, and you get told it sort of surplus the requirements and that. So. Uh, had a, had decisions to make, and I had a few clubs down south sort of asking, asking, wanting, wanting to sign me. But like I think, if anyone's got sort of any visions or goals in their career, I think you just the the, the Hibs one sort of just attracted me. Obviously, with Alan Stubbs being the gaffer at the time, I obviously followed his career um, bit when I was a young lad, and obviously he was a very good and talented defender. And the the opportunity to work with someone like that, and also just the fact that. It was going to be a challenge. Um, I like I like having challenges in my life. I think you I think you need to have certain certain challenges just to just to really test you and see how, see how you sort of can handle it. And the challenge was obviously to rebuild here as a club and and get them back into the Premier League. And granted, we didn't do it in of a sort of the first or second time of trying, but we um, we definitely built something. And then, um, like I said, we got uh, we definitely succeeded because we were able to obviously. Know, bring that the uh, holy grail home, won't we? The Scottish Cup after all that time. So, you know, like I said, that's always going to be one of my biggest sort of moments in my career. And so, yeah. Well, um, we'll ask you about the 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 Scottish Cup. There's a lot. Of, you know, obviously, you seem we put out a lot of fans' questions, and we've got a lot of fans' questions. I mean, I think majority of them were related to the Scottish Cup. So we've got quite a few. Um, looking at your first season, um, marathon bet. I, you know, obviously mm. that that sort of the the fountain of knowledge sort of kicked off. Where where did that sort of originate from? Like, was it um, did Marathon Beck sort of speak to a lot of the players, or was it where did it sort of um, come from? Um, How did well, it come about? Tom Zanelli 
I uh, was sort of uh, was the sort of link man between that, and um, you know, he approached a couple of the boys who he sort of thought would want sort of want to take take on little bits within obviously the show that he created outside the box, and um, you know, they just they come up to me and just said, "We front this, got this idea to be the, the little show of Fontaine. Is we about to just?" sit down with the boys sort of have a bit of chat and then ask them the questions and see where it goes and I was like yeah no bother so we just um so yeah, we did that and to be fair it just took off with the fans and the fans really really like it and uh yeah so I do still get a lot of Fontaine knowledge stuff thrown at me whenever I see fans or anyone in the in the in the streets you know yeah I mean you spoke earlier on about the fans really um connecting with the players and I think it was things like that that really helped, you know, see um, a good side of the players and things like that and really helped with that. Yeah, it was just a complete breath of fresh air. It was like something that the club had never done before and it, you felt that like mm-hmm. you had that connection. You got to know like, players well. That like, You yeah. found out some of the players had some quite good uh, part on that, but you wouldn't have known that if you hadn't had no. that, like, obviously, from Tom. And I think when Tom left, I think everybody was gutted. Like, it was almost like we'd lost like part of the club and you just did that which was quite a nice thing I suppose for him but it's good that he has still got that connection as well Oh yeah, without a doubt I mean he's a um, Tom's a massive Hoops fan himself you know and it's just um, yeah like obviously the show was great and it was able to sort of see the boys in a different light like you said and it's sort of one of them things that you know it can be viewed it can be viewed as a good thing and, and as a bad thing sometimes but I think that majority of the time you're, you're always going to get um the good will be the bad i think and it's like you know people will see that as as a nice insight like you say all the fans say it's, oh, it's a nice way of connecting with the boys and seeing them in different lights and, it, and it's the things like that that like you say do bring all the players closer and it's not always got to be you know just strictly football related you know what i mean um, so look, looking at the the second season, um, obviously it was a, a, a much. I think we're fair to say we were, you guys were a lot closer to the title that season, and um, mm-hmm. were ahead of Rangers for quite a bit. I think they might have had some games in hand at points and stuff, but there was I think it was quite a gap at one point and stuff. And um, you know when you ended up realizing right, okay, we're not actually going to get the the league title, and it's going to be the playoffs. How how was that? How was the mood in the dressing room at that point? Um, and how did you feel that you you could get through the playoffs? Um, I think it was like so any 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 way we sort of approached any um any game at that point was we just sort of took each game as it was and every every situation as it was. Like um, we never, I think that was instilled into us as well that we we never really sort of panicked or we never really worried you know it just it was what it was and we had to just try and sort of overcome what was in front of us at the time and you know with obviously the the hunger and the determination to try and succeed on a quickly and try and get the club back to the Premier League was what drove us all on but I mean at the same time we was having great runs in in the cups and everything like that so we was able to like like I say there was always something that the fans could sort of really connect with and buy into and really want us to do well so you know the playoffs like anything is a bit like a lottery but you know we didn't like I said we didn't deliver that season but we we had to sort of we were delivering elsewhere as well which obviously like I said it wasn't it's not ideal to to take as long as it took but I, I do think that I think in the long run I think it's it's made the club what it is today so um, just on the back of that, I mean, obviously uh, there was a lot of debate in in between the fans, uh, with obviously the cup runs and uh, still going for promotion back to the Premier League. Um, as a player at that time, what would you have chosen, the Scottish Cup or the Championship? Um, without doubt, the Scottish Cup, for me. Um <laughs> I think Stephen, that's me. a stupid question. I think everybody agrees. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a stupid, it's, a stupid, it's a stupid question, but at the same time, like, like I said, our overall, get, our overall goal was to get the club back into the, the Premier League, and um, but to be if we could wait one a, more year for that, we'd waited 114 years <laughs> exactly. for the Scottish Cup. <laughs> but to be, like I said, but to be part of that, the squad that was able to deliver the Scottish Cup, which was the sort of the whole, like I said, I said before, the holy ground. Every single fan I spoke to, whenever we had 
cup games or anything like that. And it's like, can you bring the Scottish Cup home? Can you bring the Scottish Cup home? And like, like I said, to be involved and part of the squad that were able to do that is was, yeah, massive. So Scottish Cup all day. How you, uh, big a part among? Obviously, we spoke about the the um, ended up in the playoffs, and obviously we went out to Falkirk in the playoffs, and the Ross County defeat in the League Cup as well. How big a part did they play in terms of motivation for the Scottish Cup? I mean, you know, um, yeah, I think I think massive, and but I also I've, I always have this sort of like convers whenever I talk about these sort of things with other people, I always have this sort of discussion about like I'm a believer of like everything sort of everything works out and happens the way it's supposed to. Um, and you could argue, had we won the League Cup that season, would we then have been gone on to become the Scottish Cup champions? You know, you just don't know and you'll never know. Um, but obviously, as a motivational thing, obviously being in finals like we had been throughout the, the two years before, being in semi-finals, playing at Hamden as much as we had, and then obviously to... To go out and go out in the cup final and then go out in the playoffs, people would be like, I mean, I, I read places, read things that were like, there's no way this team can't win something this year because of how good we had been, and it would have been right, it would have worked right so because I thought we were definitely a dominant team that year. I mean, we came up against so many different oppositions, Premier League and in our own league, and majority of the time we were, we were so much better and to like like I said to come away from that season with nothing would have been just wrong and and I think to win it the way we did and for it to go down to that last day in of the season in May I think it's just I think it's just like I said it's it's, it's sort of movie stuff and storybook stuff and it's just um, like I said it's just one of the things that was happened happened the way it's supposed to you mentioned there about being like storybook and and like I say it's, it's got I think it won actually won an award didn't it for like how dramatic it was in terms of the whole mm-hmm. the whole match and stuff. Um, I think it might be Sky that awarded it with that or something. But anyway, um, how often do you reminisce about it and sort of watch clips of the final? Um, that that um, question was from Kearney Eleven from Hibs.net. Okay, how often? Um, to be honest, you 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 can sometimes. It sometimes happens on a daily basis. It just depends from week to week because with obviously the connection that we have, we're able to have with fans on things like social media. And obviously when I was living in Edinburgh, you would always bump into a, a Hibs fan. And so like it, it generally just sort of depended on what week you were at. But like every day you always get like some sort of reference to to it because I mean, even like this week I was, I was, um, I've run out of box sets to watch, so I asked about box sets on Twitter, and all of a sudden I'm getting like thrown about. Just watch Time for Heroes, watch this, watch that, and you know. So it's it's genuinely you can reminisce on it about sort of every day if you wanted to. Well, um, we have got Raymond sort of striking as well on Facebook asking how many times have you went back and watched the full match? I do you know what I've never I've maybe watched the full match back maybe three or four times. Um as in the full match um, because obviously it was such a whirlwind after that it took a while to actually um, sort of wind down and actually get the time to sit down and go do you know what let's actually watch this back and and just make sure that it is, it is real you know what I mean it's like one of them things where um, but obviously you see all the clips and you watch all the goals because you're always getting tagged and stuff on the social media and you know and I've, always, I've obviously got my massive photo of me lifting the cup up in up in my house and it's just like so you're going to see things like that all the time or you're going to see like the strip from that year and every time you see things like that it's it's just um just iconic isn't it so i know i know exactly what you mean when you say you had to like obviously watch it back because see when i think about being there I can't yeah. actually remember it that well because it just all <laughs> happened too quick and like I w- you were going through that much like emotion in that and it's like I actually sat down and watched the game after it when I felt like I could relax and it was yeah. a belt of a game. I think uh, Carragher said it was the game of the season. Aye. Yeah, uh, that's what I mean. The game was incredible. I remember my auntie uh, and her family and that they sat and watched it the next day um, in the house 
and like they celebrated each goal as if it was like it had just happened and there's a video of them all going mental when David Gray still scores and stuff. Um yeah, it was great. Um so, so you, you spoke away a bit about the, the sort of like the aftermath and sort of um how it was to take it in. Uh, we've got a big Swiss striker uh, on Twitter asking what was it like after the final? You know, um and I, I mean I'm obviously in terms of the you know, I think there's a lot of drinking involved as well. J- uh, Jamie Collins is asking what was the hangover like after the drinking sesh? Um, uh, what was the what was, it, what was the aftermath like after the final? Um, like I said, it was one of them things where, I mean, the bus journey back to Edinburgh after was pretty. It was just as you can imagine, it was just non-stop sort of song singing and just sort of. I still think it was a little bit like, you know, that sort of shocked, that sort of shocked sensation to start with. It's like have we actually just gone and done that and like done it in the way we've done it? Do you know what I mean? And it was just like, obviously with the Hibs, the Hibs lads in the team, as in the, the sort of born and bred. So like Louis, Paul and, and, and Daz and, and things like that. Like for them, it was like seeing them, their sort of disbelief as well. Have we actually just done that? It was, it was pretty intense. And obviously going back on the, on the, on the M8, you had buses, cars, flying past us windows down scarfs out the window just everything like that so like all these little memories that you sort of are now lo- sort of lodged in our brains as as players and um you know the hangover yeah i guess it was pretty intense like and, and pretty <laughs> pretty good but you know it i'm definitely it was definitely um something that i won't forget like <laughs> so uh, last last question in the scottish cup so see Obviously, all the fans um, got a bit exuberant, uh, as the term we'll use. Yep. So, were the players like that bored about uh, not being able to play the cup, or did you quite enjoy being able to like stand together as a group and kind of take it all in? That question's from Craig, <laughs> um, from our WhatsApp group. <laughs> <laughs> nah, do you know what? I, I do. Um, I do. I do think that it would have been great to to get out onto the pitch. And, and do a parade. I do. I genuinely do think believe that. Um, just just the fact of I think you could have really caught some. Not that there's not iconic images already, but as in, I think you really thought you could have caught some real good sort of memories and images. Obviously, we've been able to get more of our families involved onto the pitch and things like that, and and sort of uh, integrate more with the fans. And it would have been nice to have been on the pitch. And obviously, obviously, I've watched back the video of. Sunshine of Sunshine of Leaf being sung, and it would have been nice, obviously, to parade that cup because I think it, I think we would have been there for hours to be honest if we had been on the pitch. So it's probably a good thing that we um we actually weren't allowed and we were able to get back to. Uh, I reckon that could have been the longest lock-in ever if we had um, actually got <laughs> onto, got onto the pitch. So um no, uh, and then obviously, like I said, like we had the next. I mean, the next day in um in Edinburgh was something else, wasn't it? The the parade and. I mean, like I said, the iconic images that we've we've all got. One of my favourites is the the uh, it's like a picture of the bus on on Leaf Walk, just absolutely mobbed from such a far distance, and it's just one of them one of them images that just sort of will like like I said will never sort of leave you. Um, well, I mean, based on uh, your comments on listening to Sunshine on Leaf with, on the podium mm-hmm. with the Scottish Cup amongst you, um, there was your song uh, Straight Out of Leaf, yeah. <laughs> which became yeah. a bit uh, an icon between fans. Um, mm-hmm. How did that all come about? Obviously, that was your your tribute to to the Scottish Cup win to the fans, everything yeah. with the club. I mean, it was just amazing uh, the way it all spanned together. But um, what what inspired you personally just to bring that out? Um, do you know what I was just obviously I've, I've played guitar not for that long. I've only literally been playing for maybe five years, and um, I just always muck about on my guitar. And I was just like I was in my house one day, just going, just playing around on my guitar with a little chord progression. I was like, and then just sort of came up with that with the hook for it, like the the chorus, and and then I just sort of started building little verses, and then just that was it, just had it on my phone and then obviously I played it to a couple of lads and I said, oh, I, just, I wrote this little song like and and then obviously the lads were like, oh, that's class. Like, like, didn't know you could do that. I was like, oh, yeah, I was just mucking about and then obviously it sort of grew legs and then people were like, you should release it and then obviously Marv got hold of it 
And, uh, oh, I, have, like, oh, I forgot that's how it came out, eh? Uh, and then Marv got hold of the video and then obviously put it out there. And then, um, yeah, and then the feedback was get it recorded, get it released. And so I just thought, you know what, why not? And and just did it sort of with one of the lads at the at the club. And it, it was it's by no means a, an amazing tune, but it was just something a bit of fun. Um, the fans asked for a little release, so we, I did it. And, you know, it's one of the things that's done. And, yeah, happy days. Uh, it was a cracking tune. We used it for, I think it was like our third or fourth... Um... A podcast intro, um, but yeah. Uh, although in saying that, don't come chasing after us for copyright. <laughs> <laughs> um, Didn't know that. <laughs> um, so I mean, oh, sorry. Uh, I, I, there was a question on. I think it was on Facebook, and I apologise to the person. I've known their name down. They did ask, "When's the album coming out?" <laughs> When's the album coming out? No, so that. Um, I mean, obviously, that song that I did. Uh, coming up, coming straight out of leaf is was just like uh, was just one that I did for the fans. But I I have I have wrote some other songs which would obviously be which would obviously it's not football related, so it's a bit more it'd have a bit more of a wider fan base. So just have to watch that space and if I ever decide to release one. Interesting. <laughs> there you go. We'll keep an eye there out for go. that. Um, <laughs> okay, so I uh, moving on with the third season. Um, I mean, obviously that you you were injured for a bit and you weren't getting as much football. Um, mm-hmm. uh, but but before that, I mean, obviously there was a change of manager. Just quickly, um, I think this came from a uh, Bob Marley's Doug on Hibs.net. <laughs> uh, okay. What was the differences between Lennon and Stubbs when Lennon came in? Um, differences. I mean, I think every every manager in football has their own identity, don't they? And obviously I think you knew what sort of Neil Lennon's was from before he even came in. Obviously, if you'd watched Celtic in the past and, and known him as a player, I think you knew what he was going to bring to the club. Um, and I think he, he, I think everyone sees it because he wears his heart on his sleeve, doesn't he? He's a very passionate man and he's a very, very good motivator and demands high, high standards. And from the sort of the get-go when he came in, he we had a meeting with him and he sort of laid out laid out his goals and what we were going to achieve that year and you just you could see it in his his eyes that he had like I said you have your goals and you could see it in his eyes that he had his goal of getting his back into the Premier League and we went on to do it and you know um, it's a very good like I said very good he's a winner obviously with his with his history um, obviously with Celtic and and as a player he's very successful in his career so you know it's like I said to be able to sort of work with these people throughout your career is, is, is just great and then um, <clears throat> you know and then eventually you know uh, last season um, due to uh, a bit of injury and stuff um, your decision to leave Hibs came about um, yeah. how, how difficult was that at the time? Yeah very difficult um yeah, like you said, I had a my 2017 was a bit sort of just mind blowing, really, um, because I got injured obviously in the March against Dunfermline, recovered from the injury, and then had the setback of doing the exact same thing on the other leg. So, you know, as a sort of as a in a player, and things that happen as a player, you sort of your mind just is a bit like blown at the start and then you have to sort of go you go through your process of dealing with it and then it got to a point where I was back fit and enjoying training back in training and sort of doing well in training but ultimately as a professional footballer you want to play games and you want to play football and the, the, the boys were going well doing well and obviously as much as it was great to be part of it all as a squad and, and be, a, be a great teammate and squad member as, as we always were there I still had the I sort of regained my. I wanted to play football. Just have my des- my desire to play football was was big, and I wasn't going to get as much game time there as I needed. And obviously, with my sort of contract drawing to an end, there wasn't any indication at the time as whether I'd be getting an extension. And you need to obviously be have games under your belt to to then progress on to a new another contract. And obviously, Ross County was the team that sort of came in and said, "Come and play for us. We're going to play you every game." and I sort of went, sort of had to make the decision myself just to say, Do you know what, I'm going to have to have to move away, like you said, and it, and it, it wasn't ideal, as in it wasn't my ideal situation, but at the same time, 
I need to do it for for my career. So you move on to Ross County. We'll briefly just talk about Ross County, um, and then let you finish up with talk, uh, talking about Fontaine Meats. But you know, mm-hmm. Ross County, you moved on, and by the way, first off, a fantastic shirt no, uh, number choice. Um, <laughs> and then you know, you look you look at the, the additions that were brought in. You had Owen Coyle, who's managed in the Premier League yourself, and very young, talented defender, and Harry Souter beside you, tall laddie, mm-hmm. um, Fraser. Um, uh, the defender Fraser, who obviously came to Celtic, uh, Naismith, yep. uh, there's another defender as well. So, I mean, really good basis there for a good defence. Um, yep. What What do you think went wrong in terms of you know ending up being relegation? Because I think you know on paper it looks like you know with yourself. And yeah, I mean, well, um, honestly, I, I I think I think like um, when that sort of when a when a team at the time are going through like a bad spell and and you get into a bit of a rut and whatever's happening around the club is happening. It's, I think you need to have, there's a lot of factors that sort of are in place for success. And if they're not all aligned and all sort of going, pulling in the same direction, then, you know, you're going to get into ruts and you're going to, and it's very hard once you're in a rut, to obviously, to get out of it. Um, on paper, like you say, it, it looked like a, a great, um, sort of great squad, a great setup and that. But obviously, ultimately, we weren't able to, to stay in there the uh, Premier League and you know it's maybe maybe it's what sometimes clubs need is to sort of be able to clear out and, and revamp and that's obviously what we're doing this year at Ross County with the sort of goal again to, to bounce back up yeah, I mean, um, just just what you were saying there about obviously clubs sometimes just needing that transition period, falling down the league to to yeah. then come back up and build again. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously you came into Hibs at the exact same point um, where we had went through a really bad spell for a number of years before getting relegated. Um, obviously you came in, the club started to build up again. We brought in Leanne and. Stubbs, and then obviously uh, won the Scottish Cup with with the changes mm-hmm. that were happening. Um, I mean, does that look as though what's going on at Ross County at the moment? I mean, obviously you're working now with co-managers, which is yep. very rare. Um, I mean, how's that working out for the club? It works well. Um, have they're very very good guys to work for. Um, the way they sort of go about their work with with, with sessions and. What they demand on the players and and just the whole sort of unit that they're rebuilding here and like I said the dressing room that they're building I think all like I said all the little factors that are key in in being successful are being put in place and so far are going well so you know it is it's it's great to be a be, be a part of and like I said it's always it's always good to have something you sort to play for and to to have as your to have as your sort of your drive you know so yeah. I think it's fair to say a lot of Hibs fans will be having a close eye on Ross County this season and hoping um, with you there that uh, you have a good season and are back in the Premier League next season. Um, and I think a lot of Hibs fans enjoy an away day to Dingwall. Obviously a big drive, but you know, if yeah. you're taking the bus of that, it's more drinking as well. So, um, <laughs> but um, so I, I, quickly before we get to Fontaine's meets, because uh, Dave's just yep. pointed out I've missed a bit on the, my piece of paper here. Uh, so I'll just okay. do a quick, fi- quick fire around uh, some general questions, which I couldn't really. Cat guys, um, so quick fire round. Um, Natural okay. order on Donet dot net has asked who was the best player you played with at Hibs. That's what I played with at Hibs. Um, I think I'm gonna have to say SJM Super John again. That's a good answer to be fair. So uh, a quick question from uh, Glory Glory to the High Bees Seven off dot net. So, uh, how good do you think Ryan Porteous uh, could be? And did he leave an impression on you uh, when he started training in the first team? I think he can be. I think he can be very, very good. Um, genuinely, because he's got great attributes as a, and he's only young. Um, I think it's, it's clear to see he's got the the aggression and the hunger to be very top top end centre half. He plays. The, plays the game well, as in with the ball on the deck as well. Um, and obviously, when when you're a first team player and and the young lads get the opportunity to come and train with you, you that, that's when you see the sort of whether they've got the the sort of next thing to sort of progress again, you know. And every time Ryan used to come and train with us, he didn't have that 
that sort of nervousness about him. He used to come in and just do what he did good. And that is why he's doing as he is for, for Hibs now, because he's not, he's over the the sort of, oh my God, we're, tra- we're, we're playing, I'm training with the first team very quickly and just sort of went about his work. And he's, an, he's a great role model, I think, for the younger younger boys already at Hibs. And he's already, and obviously with him being so young as well. So I, I genuinely believe he's going to go on to, to be a very, very strong centre back in the future in, in in Scottish and English football. I think he's got the, the the ability to do that. Yeah, I mean, obviously that's high praise coming from a, a strong no defence, uh, no nonsense centre back like yourself. Um, we've obviously got another question uh, from Bob Marley's dog on Hibs dot net. Um, he's busy, isn't he? Bob Marley's dog. <laughs> oh, he certainly yeah. is. <laughs> uh, what does winning an Edinburgh derby feel like, and uh, how is the atmosphere for yourself? Uh, yeah, um, again, that's something else as well. You know, um, like I said, in my time at Hibs, um, I think it's just been nothing but success against against the other side. You know, I think um, we've had some great nights. At, I remember the one that there was the night at Easter Road when uh, I think we won maybe three one that that day. Is that or, the, and, um, the one where Holt scored. The, yeah, uh, the last yeah, one. that that. And I think that that game for me was like that sort of just sort of summed up that at the time our sort of dominance because that night we genuinely felt that we just couldn't be beaten. Like we we that's how the, that that was the feeling that was going through us at the time that we I think it's you know I think it's just the way we were at the time we were we were we were confident we just knew we were. We had the number, and you know, it's it's. I'm looking forward to to watching the first head of the derby this season. To be honest, I think that's going to be an absolute cracker. So, you know, I'll be I'll be tuning in for that one definitely. We had um, Trish uh, Trish dot Clark on Instagram asking, other than the cup win, uh, what is your favourite moment at Hibs? Would you say it's a three one victory you just mentioned? Um, yeah, that was um. Yeah, that's definitely up there. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, I think. Do you know what I think? It's really the. I used to love the the sunset and leaf moments after after them games. Yeah. When, especially under the lights at Easter Road, it is. Uh, yeah, they're 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 sort of moments that sort of stick with you. Um. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and the only other question we had written down here was from Matt AF about um you and the likes of Marvin Bartley and that getting Hibs, but Dave stole that earlier on, so we'll not ask that yeah. one again. So no sorry, worries. Matt F, for Dave stealing your question. Um, <laughs> so the last week, um, I know you uh, we will get you to talk about uh, Fontaine Meats um, linking up with Tom Zanelli again. Um, yep. You've had a lot of posts on like Instagram and stuff, meeting Gokwan and stuff. So, so what can you tell us about it? Um, I mean, all I can tell you is that yeah, again, Tom approached me with obviously um, sort of regarding working with me again. He said, "Could obviously enjoy doing it." when he was um, so much at a marathon bet. So he wanted to link up with me again. And said, I've got an idea for you. Would you be interested to front it for me? And I was like, so I said, should he tell me what it was? And I said, yeah, why not? I'll give it a go. Um, and then obviously he said that he secured a sponsor. So obviously with Trad building and roofing, they decided to sponsor the show, which was, which was great of them. And then, um, you know, Tom did what he did best, which is his ideas and, and, what he wants to what he visualizes is is sort of what brings it together and then he put my face to it so you know it's 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 a bit of fun um i'm not gonna lie i was a bit little bit a little bit nervous to start with i'm not i've not done the presenting thing for a while to be honest (laughs) so obviously to get thrown into to obviously a festival that's um environment is uh is quite funny because everyone else has been there on the on the res for like two days and you're like <laughs> walking around um sort of trying to meet an interview and you know and it was an, an opportunity as well I saw to be able to just to be able to do a different side again to to me um just because it was obviously it's something that I mean I do like the I did eventually love doing the whole Fontaine and stuff and you know, if this can take off to to be something which Tom believes it can, um, I think it's going to be a, a good thing. Um, it's definitely fun, uh, and like I said, basically it's just a case of me going around um, events or, you know, trying to sort of connect with 
local sort of local based celebrities um in edinburgh and and, and scotland to, to for now and just um yeah just sort of interview have a bit of banter and, and just see where what goes and it's just you know a little bit of light eyed light eyed fun and you know if it takes off it does well and i'm hoping that all the uh, the Hibs fans that support him over the years are going to support this as well. Yeah, I've no doubt about that. That the um, they'll, I'm sure they'll all take the time to um, check it out for a club legend like yourself. Um, and I think it's fair to say you've been a legend for coming on this as well. Um, really appreciate you taking your time to speak to us. Um, no and uh, yeah, and I, I don't know if you've uh, seen like all the stuff on social media and stuff. When we, we asked for a lot of questions, a lot of people came back with. Us just saying tell him thank you very much just for being such a great guy and such a great player and um, a legend at the club so it's a lot of people just sort of no even wanting to ask a question just to say thank you for everything you've done with the club so um, I, oh, listen, I'd pass I it on appreciate as well. yeah listen I appreciate that um, massively because obviously for me um, like I said to get appreciate to get appreciated and just people have it, being so thankful is is great but um, I also appreciate everyone also everyone's sort of support over the years has been great for me since I've been up here and Long may it continue for for years to come. So no, it's been an absolute honour to be on the on the show, and uh, I'll um I'll definitely be tuning in to to future ones and and sort of catching up on some ones that I've obviously missed. But no, it's been great, and uh, it's been a pleasure. Fantastic, and uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we're, we've already spoke to Tom about coming on in a few weeks' time. So we'll make sure okay. we we'll plug um, Fontaine meets then again. It's, it's just in case anybody misses it, misses yeah. it, but I'm sure we'll have a few more listens than usual this week. So thanks again for coming on, and um, no problem. I, we'll speak again soon. Cheers, Liam. Cheers, mate. Great. Thanks, thanks very much. much mate. See, See you later. See you. Bye bye. Next up, we have a quick look ahead to the Aberdeen game. Okay, for, so for those of you that have stuck around after the Liam Fontaine interview, thank you for sticking around. Uh, we're going to preview Aberdeen very quickly. So, I mean, I'm going to have to hear all about it because I'm not going to be there this weekend, unfortunately, with due to work commitments. I'm missing this game at the weekend. So, what are you guys looking forward to since you guys are going? So, I mean, how, starting off, how are we going to line up? It's a bit of a mystery in terms of who, Horgan or the other boy I can't pronounce yet because I'm awful with names. I Pong. Ipong, we'll uh, that. the Australian seventy-one capped Australian player. You know who, who's going to play, who's not going to play. What changes are we making? Um, oh, you just throw them up in there and then see what happens. Like that's <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. I'm not going to pretend that I think I know how they're going to line up because they're not going to play wing backs because they're not going to drop Stevenson because I'd imagine Horgan's going to play. Um, so we're going to change the system. I we'll, think we'll probably go four-four-two. Right. Um, that's how I think we'll probably line up. Um, what do you think? Like you're looking I, at me like I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I don't, I don't uh, know. We just need to see what happens because the players that we brought in, it's like how are they going to fit into our system? Obviously, you've got uh, Milligan, the Australian boy. Mm-hmm. So could it be Milligan and Malin in centre mid with Horgan and Apiong and the the wings? Uh, to be honest, I don't think Milligan's got to be playing on Saturday. Um, he's still not got his work permit granted yet. All oh, right, and he's still got that to come through. So um, likely, as I think, it will be four four two, like Dave said. Right. Um, Big Marvin, be, is Bar- Marvin Battle injured or eight weeks? He's out. For ah, me. so um, Scott Martin. Did he, you, he picked you, up an injury on Sunday. I'm sure. Um, is that why he went off at half time? That'd be the only reason that they bring on Whitaker. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, Whitaker will be playing. <laughs> well, no. To be honest, I, I think logically uh, it'd be it'd be stupid not to start Gray because I mean he's formed this season. Every game he's played, uh, we've been a better team, and we're going to need him behind Boyle. Um, Boyle, so, right enough, aye. So if you mention Boyle, f- so four 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 two is logical for me. Put uh, Horgan on the left, Boyle on the right, Camberry and McLaren up front because you're going to need to start getting that partnership and uh, going now. How's Camberry's injury? Do you think we, do we think he's back? I'd fancy him to be back. Um, it wasn't anything serious. I think it was more just the the thigh problems for uh, previous, was it not? Just for the Europa League run. Aye, bringing that Ipong off the bench. Um, like for Horgan later on imagine like hit Horgan running at you all day and then you've got Ibon coming off the bench you'd be absolutely burst because he obviously he's meant to be really fast Brandon Barker said he's the fastest player he's ever he's ever seen uh, play for well play with so that'll be quite interesting to see yeah 
So, aye, uh, ex- I mean, it's exciting. We're all, like a few new players, and we're about unsure about how because this is it's really you know three new players. We're not sure how they're going. to I've got a question for you. Okay, since you ask us questions all the time. Oh no, Martin, <laughs> would you or do you think he'll drop Ambrose after his comments about his mistakes? Ooh, see. I'd like, to, if, especially if we're going to back four, I would like it to be Hanlon and Porteous, but I think he'll go Hanlon and Ambrose and see if Ambrose does better in a different system because, you know, Ambrose is on a big wage. It's a lot of wages to pay for somebody to sit on the bench. Stephen, I know you're looking at me as if you've got completely different thoughts. <laughs> 100%. Uh, I mean, I was saying to you earlier, it's, it's the whole Ambrose thing. Uh, is, for him to come out on the Sunday and make the comments saying that Ambrose needs to start picking up his performances or he's not getting a game that's not something that you say in public and we've seen it happen to players before you need to sort that out behind closed doors and Lennon's the one that makes the decisions he makes it he picks a team unless it's not the case but for him to make the comments and then no drop Ambrose who's made mistake after mistake after mistake week after week um I mean he's got to go with Hanlon and Porteous that's, that's got to be Hibbs' main two centre-backs going forward, in my opinion. Right, so we're playing Aberdeen, so let's talk a wee bit about our opposition on sun, uh, Saturday. Back to Saturday games. The shag sheep. <laughs> <laughs> Back to Saturday games, because there's a lot of European football. Um, I mean, they've got a lot of stuff going on with them just now. They've uh, got just paid a lot of compensation, compensation for Lewis Ferguson. Um, they've got a lot of interest in McKenna um, although he's injured so won't be playing at the weekend um, and they've just seen Wilson from Man United who is a bit of an unknown um, because you know is obviously coming from Man United he's got a big reputation but has only scored what was it 9 goals in 56 games or something I was talking to my cousin from Aberdeen about this um, he's not got a great reputation in the championship um, from all his loan moves so is he going to do much better up here you know look how you know, a lot of people say oh uh, Scottish Premiership isn't good as the Championship, but you look at Wa- Waghorn at Rangers. So, anyway, um, Dave, what, what, I mean, what I used to sign Wilson on Football Manager back in the day. He's uh, fast, but I used to get sacked all the time. Uh, like, all right, okay. So <laughs> that's my input. Um, so, I mean, they've started the season. Obviously, a very you know they did go out in the end uh, to Burnley an extra time, but they got a lot of. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Dave, Dave just hit Stephen in the head with the microphone, if you heard that noise there. Uh, they got a lot, of, a lot of admiration for the way they played and the fact they took Burnley to extra time. Uh, a draw with Rangers, um, they've beaten Dundee and then they absolutely hammered St Murn, Stubbsy St Murn. Uh, Mackay Stevens had a blinder that day. You know, are you worried about the likes of Mackay Stevens? We've obviously seen how good a team St, uh, Aberdeen are in the last few years. How how are you feeling about the game and about their danger, man? Well, I mean, Mackay Stephen, the last few games that we've played Aberdeen, he's been the difference, eh? Um, yeah. I think that Aberdeen are going through a funny patch, you know. Uh, they've got a lot of players coming in, players going out. Uh, McKenna, their main main centre backs out for the next four or five weeks or something. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting but we really need to sort ourselves out defensively if we've got to pick up any points because mm-hmm. I mean Mackay Stephen will just run at that centre back pair and if it's Ambrose and we'll get beat easy <laughs> right love your positivity again Stephen ok yeah, well, that's right score fun. predictions so we'll just finish up with the Aberdeen game what we're thinking 3-1 Hibs uh, actually I'm going to go a Hibs win as well uh, I'm going to go 2-1 Right, I'll go 1-1. One, one. I'll say a draw. So, that's what I'm going for. Um, okay, so before we finish up, just a couple, I wanted to get, get your opinion on a couple of things. Um, obviously, Lafferty leaving um, Hearts to go at Rangers. Um, no interest in that. So, no, I'm not interested. No. Um, but Jamie Murphy was interested, injured um, at the weekend and has been ruled out for... Or was it last weekend? It doesn't matter. He's been basically he's been ruled out for the rest of the season um, after playing on AstroTurf part pitch. We've now got Livingston, Hamilton, and Kamarnock with AstroTurf pitches. That's three of the twelve clubs. So even if he does come back next season, you know that's six games he's probably going to miss because they won't risk him on that pitch. What's your thoughts on AstroTurf pitches? Should you know there's been a lot of calls for uh, they should be listening to the professional players. Should we get rid of them? A hundred percent. They need scrapped. Just rip them up. I honestly would wouldn't they be against 
like the SFA funding it to, for them to go back to grass pitches. Um, I wouldn't care if they had to pay for it. I, I wouldn't be like, oh, but how are they getting like a couple of but hundred it, grand to fix a pitch and we're not getting anything because we've got a good pitch? I just think it would just help everybody and improve the standard. But it's not even the standard. It's like we're all getting fed up of getting called a tin pot league. Like, and we've got t- top flight games played on like an AstroTurf. Like, it's just... So what about the likes? So I mean that's that's fair enough. If if somehow magically the SFA could turn around and say, um, "Oh, we'll pay for turning them back to grass pitches," great. What then? The clubs would turn around and say, "Right, well, who's going to compensate us for um, paying gar- for uh, pitch gardeners, whatever the hell they're called?" Um, what, what's the word? Greenkeepers. Green, greenkeepers. That's the word I'm looking for. Who's going to pay compensate? Who's going to pay for the greenkeepers that we can't afford? We've made a, d- a decision to switch to Ash Stuff pitches because we can't afford a greenkeeper. Well, I mean, Kim, like rather than pay a, hundred, a couple of hundred grand for a, a pitch like just playing grass, Hearts paid a million pound for the hybrid pitch. Right, Livingston, Kilmarnock and Hamilton do not have a million pounds. No, that's what they've saying about the SFA. Like, put right, in but then they're going to need maintained from gr- grasskeepers. It doesn't take that much maintenance. and the fact You're still going to need somebody even put in a part-time right. salary or a full-time salary. That's a lot of money. But see, to be honest with you, see if you've got a football club, you maintain your football pitch. Exactly. It's that simple. Like, there shouldn't be a... Oh, but we can't... You're a football team. Maintain your football pitch. It's no difficult. Don't you know sign I mean? that expensive striker. Aye. What, if you, what happens if you've got a big gear done? And you've got a job. Oh, you need to still go out and cut your grass and rather look after your grass. And rather than signing Malumbu last season and put those wages towards our greenkeeper. Aye, they, they just need to find a way. <laughs> I'm against to be after them as well, but I'm just, I'm just playing devil's devil's advocate. And we're all trying to wind us up. Yeah, a wee bit. <laughs> you know, I'm just getting you angry for your balls. <laughs> Play <laughs> angry. <laughs> I, th- I think what it is though is you've got to put into perspective the fact that I mean, you look at Levy Kilmarnock game. And that was like they show the highlights of this on TV, right? And you saw black pellets flying up over the off the pitch. That's something that you see at a fucking sports centre. That's not something that you should be seeing at a professional football game, especially in the top flight. And I mean, Gerard made an arse of himself again on Sunday when he made the comments. Says it says straight after the game, or oh, we can't really blame the pitch for uh, Murphy's injury and then the next game press conference he's calling for all, p- all pitches or 4G pitches <laughs> to be outlawed like, you, you, it's, it's just the Rangers way right. but but putting that aside you can't have it like Hamilton, Kilmarnock, Livy if you can't maintain a pitch like Dave says you can't play in the Premier League it's like, it's like what they've done with, with uh, Gretna when they first came up they had them playing at Motherwell Stadium because the, their stadium wasn't suitable so how many seasons in a row did, like, for example, Falkirk win the first division and get tell, oh, you can't come up because you've not got your stadiums not suitable? So like, Aberdeen yeah. didn't get relegated. So why is it all like that? Should just be there should just be a standard, and the first standard a football team, uh, you've got grass. Where do you play football? On the grass. Well, it's always been like a basic king, unless you, what are you saying? Well. At fives, yeah, I play aye, an Astro Tough. Aye, but I'm and no can I just a say, professional football player. I pay on, three pound to play. I didn't get on, paid thousands. At fives, so my career. I've never been injured. So oh, I, I, Jamie, I, Jamie Murphy, you're a, you're a I do my <laughs> ankles all the time. I've got chocolate ankles. Honestly, made of glass. Because, but Jack Wilshire. Aye, worse than that. But like, <laughs> if I go a year without rolling my ankle, there's, it's a miracle. An absolute miracle. I play it three times a week. Like, didn't help myself because I still wear studs. Oh, right, I play once every like every time somebody's needing a, a game <laughs> uh, they're oh we're struggling for a player can you help out oh, I can't really be arsed, but okay so that's like once a month so yeah aye, to be fair, I'm not playing as much as you yeah that's what it is aye okay right well thanks for that guys I hope you've enjoyed speaking to Scottish Cup legend um, Liam Fontaine as much as I did and uh, enjoy the game I've gutted I'm not going but hopefully it's a good game that I miss and a uh, nice Hibs win um, and thanks for all your guys questions apologies if we kind of covered uh, some of your questions and never credited you we, we tried to get as much um, paperwork done beforehand but um, it was to get everybody credited but if we didn't if, it, if we missed out your question we're very sorry we couldn't keep Liam for, for ages we kind of it was very it was great that he stood on as long as he did so thank you very much for all your questions it was really appreciated and we're getting a couple other things lined up in terms of ex players and stuff so keep your questions coming for those players in the future and uh, yeah thank you very much guys follow us on the likes uh, Twitter and Facebook that and just search at HFC talk cheers bye cheers guys 
We'll be back next week to review review the Aberdeen game and to look ahead to the Livingston game. And remember, the 2.1.com forward slash subscribe and use the code HIPSTOP for 10% off. Check out Bet in the Base on Spotify and iTunes now. I hope you're having a good night I got tonic wine